Thank you, Babaji, for this session today. Uh, I'll start with the first question. In one of the talks of Babaji previously, Babaji was talking about faith. And Babaji mentioned that an innocence in the mind is necessary, means the mind is totally pure. Babaji, what is the innocence that Babaji is talking about? And how is it connected to having faith? Is it something that we can train ourselves to have an innocent mind? Or is it a natural part of existence for some people based on their upbringing and exposure? Uh, this uh, innocence, what I talk is purity in the mind. And the mind shall not have any doubts. In total faith, it takes just like you try to teach the child something, and the child picks up in total faith. So in that same way, Swamiji used to talk if Bhakti Marga can be taught, taught while one is still a child, then they pick up because of the innocence well, here, innocence doesn't mean that you fool yourself. And innocence is purity in the heart or in the mind. So then you take it in good faith. Then whatever the master teaches, you don't keep arguing and you don't misunderstand and you will take it in good faith and then get into the job of doing sadhana. So that type of innocence, what? I keep talking and which cultivates and develops and cultivates the faith in the Guru and the teachings and sadhana and it induces self-confidence also tremendously. So this innocence is what I'm talking. Babaji, when you mentioned that having faith uh, and uh, in what the Guru says, does that mean that um, we are not supposed to question or or the, these questions that we have that we pose to Babaji for clarification? Uh, question is uh, two different aspects are there. If you have a doubt, you are welcome to ask for clarification always. That question is always welcome. But questioning means when you doubt the master himself and doubt the system, so that doubt, that questioning is not proper. That's what Swamiji used to tell argumentative nature of a person. A person who has argument, even Ramakrishna Paramahamsa used to tell, a person with argumentative nature can never understand the spiritual truths and cannot go for that. So that is different. But with all reverence, if you want to ask a question for clarification from the master, that is always welcome. Thank you, Babaji. Next question. Today, Babaji's body is here and giving talks, but Babaji's body will go away one day. But the name Shiva Bala Yogi will always be there. Babaji, does the Guru's name work as our point of focus and help us to subside our monkey mind into single pointedness? Some do not have their specific Guru or Ishta Devata. They learn and adapt to the teaching by various texts and gurus they are comfortable with. How about someone who does not have a specific guru? How will they get their anchor of support in the name of divine or guru? Uh, if one has a specific guru that is recommended because the mind will not get confused for the student. Because different teachers are likely to have used different terminologies also. That too, if all teachers are not self-realized, so there can be different type of language and teachings also can be confusing for a person. So that one needs to be careful. Books can be very helpful. It can be guiding light and it can be motivating and inspiring definitely. But while reading books, one should not get confused. He, Babaji used to tell like this, but this another Maharaj is telling like this. So that type of confusion must not happen. 
for that purpose swamiji always used to tell that if you have one guru so that is recommended always however if you read about other gurus or any other texts also for comfort it's really no harm divine will not get annoyed or the guru also will not get annoyed but you have to be careful so that you don't get confused you follow one teaching then you will reach the goal also in the right sense and right way thank you baba ji and our next question whatever appears as the physical body is not our self the true self is the atman beyond birth and death nobody can cause us pain baba ji if we believe that pain and pleasure is not real should we go on tolerating people who do wrong things sometimes people manipulate and make us or others look bad in order to make themselves look good should we embrace the situation hoping the divine will do what is needed and do not re react to clarify things no this is a misunderstanding see when we talk the physical body is not our real self we are not the physical body we are beyond that the atman beyond the birth and death of the physical body but when we are in this world we are through this body only we are in this world this body needs to react this body needs to defend itself this body needs to be taken care also otherwise we be, if we lose this body we won't be able to interact with this world like if the guru loses body you won't be able to receive the teachings physically so that's what happens so in this world you have to be careful as ramakrishna also used to be telling if a tiger comes the tiger also is god but you have to be careful with a tiger otherwise it will eat your body it may not be able to eat you you are the atman but your body will be gone or that you have to defend your body so in this be in this drama of the world if people are wicked if they are trying to trouble you they are trying to belittle you humiliate you you have a right to defend yourself simply practically if you practice meditation then your mind will be silent and it will not absorb any of these imprints for the mind it will not be a true world it will be a drama but for physical body you have to behave accordingly you have to eat food also to sustain physical body you have to take rest everything becomes necessary so you need to keep it separately what the mind is so if you meditate the mind will be taken care mind will regain its pure form of pure consciousness and merge with the self and the self awareness is there always you will not get carried away with the happenings of the world like somebody misbehaves with me i might show annoyance but that doesn't mean that i will lose control over myself i will use it only that much that is necessary and then i will withdraw myself control myself so that i don't misbehave but i will do defend this body it becomes very necessary so like that we have to understand and live in this world one must not misunderstand body physical world and the mind and self they are all two different things self is different like you watch in the movie whatever that has been produced in movie that will happen like that it has to happen if the villain is going to win over then nobody will watch the movie hero has to win good has to win over the bad thing always so that will be the predicted drama but you will be aware that you are watching a drama mentally you don't get involved physically whatever is needed if you need to act upon you have to act upon this is very important that's why we always tell just by theory you cannot understand the advaita and behave like that in this world you are likely to misunderstand like ramakrishna story the man the student who are listening to advaita's uh, teaching he forgot that elephant rider also is god he thought ki if elephant has god in it it should not be harming but it harmed him physically but the elephant rider was asking him to give way then the master ridiculed him 
the elephant rider also he has got in him he was warning you to give way why didn't you give way so you have to be like that in this world so practice of meditation ultimately only can help you to understand the advaita yet and behave in this world without getting mentally affected so baba ji does that uh, can i conclude that we still need to act and take the necessary actions on whatever is happening but through the practice of meditation we get we don't get attached to the outcome of what happens yeah outcome and what the others did or you are going to do you should not get attached mentally just do it as a duty simply then your mind will remain detached that practice will come only through practice of meditation only thank you baba ji uh the next question is about duality and non duality when you begin you begin as jivatma wanting to meditate on divinity paramatma you are the droplet unknown to you you become connected baba ji can you please elaborate on the duality and non duality teaching which of the concepts is encouraged for us to follow and during the practice of meditation as the jivatma is slowly progressing our love for our guru remains does that mean there's an attachment and we are still in duality see this thing at every at that stage both are equally important in fact there is one more today i will tell vishishta dvaita also duality non duality and the vishishta dvaita so trinities three acharyas happened in south india one was adi shankar acharya who propagated the non duality advaita and madhava acharya who propagated jivatma and paramatma the duality dvaita philosophy ramanuja acharya propagated vishishta dvaita his philosophy he said the jivatma is an amsha is a portion part of the divinity final truth only not different though yet it is not exactly the divinity so like that they propagated all the three are like that now for a seeker when you begin you begin as a droplet the ocean is your god you need an anchor to meditate and then for medit that's what you are doing in this silent meditation also though without naming you are asked to watch in between slowly as the mind gets cleared the mind becomes purified it starts going towards its origin that which is the divine recognized as divine but as it starts going once after it comes here in the agna chakra then the seeker feels as if he is above here in the sahasrara kamala when the mind becomes pure consciousness it gets detached from the brain's clutches totally and one feels it here there is no thousand petals lotus is here symbolically teachers have spoken when the mind is here it is totally purified and ready to go to samadhi ready to merge with the ultimate truth so it is blossomed just like a thousand petals lotus just like a is different a thousand petals is different so many people misunderstand that's why i was telling just by listening to theory you cannot practice the non duality also you will be confused every step can be confusing so you must not do that one practice meditation one day that advaita will come to you when you would experience the truth when the merger happen when the i also disappears as long as the i thought is there there is a duality i and mine are my truth all like this they all disappear in the advaita finally when you merge until then you have to be practicing so to begin with it is better to practice jivatma and paramatma and do sadhana do the silent meditation 
this will automatically take you to the advaita without bothering without thinking just go on meditating because you have to become silent in every way you have to become silent all the things in the mind disappear dissolve then it becomes pure consciousness finally the i thought also disappears the i also you will understand was only an individual imagined self which never existed so like that so then when the merger happened only one single self exists that is the truth for that there is no attribution only one single self is there there is no divine no devotee as long as there is a student there is a master and guru naiva shishya adi shankaracharya sings in his nirvanashtakam na ca vyoma bhumi na tejo na vayu you know in the same way he tells guru naiva shishya mat na mata ca janma pita naiva mata ca janma like that he go on telling neither this nor that na i also is not there finally only one single self it exists in itself so that is how you slowly start with the jivatma parmatma duality and then go to advaita eventually advaita is not a thing to be practiced in the world you just be there that's all when you are one with it it's automatically in that just for understanding that teaching was given finally one single truth exists one single self exists but you don't go don't go on practicing to tell i am advaita i am advaita there is no such claim it all ends every definition ends you simply become silent so that is how you have to practice only practically it happens by theory it's very difficult to understand it as i told every moment it can be very confusing for people that is why swami ji never gave name for his philosophy never tried to teach any such thing he simply insisted emphasize just meditate and know the truth to yourself you meditate and then you will know what it is like buddha buddha also kept quiet so like swami ji also like buddha he kept quiet that's why in silence only he taught silent was his message so that is what this duality non duality all the things are thank you baba ji uh we'll go to the next question when you have full faith in that name of your guru and your mind gets connected you get to see the form of your guru manifesting is our imagination and thought that is causing the manifestation baba ji does merging in the ocean eliminate all imagination including the bond between us and our guru or our ishta deva you see in these points again you have to understand you have watched baba ji though we realize the self merged with the divine so there was no guru no disciple in our consciousness neither this nor that but yet in this world we behave for the worldly manners we consider swami ji as our guru we always tell everybody swami ji is my guru and i am at his lotus feet only this is needed in this world to recognize like this sitting here in this body if i start talking there is no difference between me and my guru that is not knowledge that is arrogance that is totally nonsense thing nobody should try to take the guru's place in this world so that is essential when you are in this world you are a disciple he is a guru that is the reason we requested everybody to call me only as baba ji because we all called swami ji as swami ji in the mission so that people should not get confused calling me also swami ji calling swami ji also swami ji now they are clear baba ji means it is the disciple swami ji means it is the guru in this world that is important but within me when i am not there there is nothing else only one guru like there is a beautiful saying of hanuman ji also when asked about this dvaita and advaita he says ki in advaita i am not there also only shri rama nothing else exists and in dvaita he says ki 
I am there as a dasa, dasya bhava. I am there as the servant of Sri Rama, and Sri Rama is my master, my lord. So like that, he tells, explains that one. So that is what we all have to behave. We learnt this thing from our gurus also. Like Swamiji himself never claimed himself to be God or any such thing. So these things have really no meaning, Swamiji used to tell. God is God and we are that. Yogeshwara is Lord Shiva and we are Yogendra. We are Yogi. I am Yogi is Shiva's disciple. Lord Shiva is my Guru. Shankar Bhagavan is my Guru. Like that Swamiji also behaved in this world with proper manners. So this is what is need to be understood properly and then behave accordingly. When you meditate, when you are able to do tapas, automatically everything will go away in your consciousness. When there is nothing, no imagination comes about yourself, about anybody else. Only one thing you will see that is all. But when you come out in this world, you will also behave properly with all humility. It is very necessary to behave accordingly. Thank you, Babaji. Uh, Babaji, can I open to the devotees if anyone has a question? Yeah, okay. If anyone has a question, you can uh, raise your hand to ask directly to Babaji or put it in the chat and I can read the question. Pranam Baba, can you hear me? Yes. Um, Baba, my question is, is prana the life force same as the cosmic energy? Same, um, exactly same. Simply different cultures have used different terminologies. So, like America uses astronaut, Russia uses the name of cosmonaut. So that like means, that, there is no different, the same thing. So Baba, that means the, pra, the origin of prana is the Atman itself. Am I right? Yes. Okay, the second question, Baba. Is prana the energy within the breath or prana is the breath itself? No, not breath. It is beyond breath. It is the Atman. When we are talking of the Atman, the breath is just to supplying oxygen to the body and taking out the carbon dioxide. That is the breath we recognize as. The prana, Atman is beyond these things. That means, Baba, I studied in your commentary on Viveka Chudamani. You said that prana is constantly changing, but Atman is unchanging. Therefore, prana cannot be the Atman. So can you please... Yeah, in that, that stage, that? in that stage, the student, until doesn't become a guru, cannot become a guru, has to be a guru. Like that, prana is the in the mind. Means... Mind has imaginations. Until it has imaginations, it cannot be the Atman. Atman doesn't change us. It is in the purity of its existence. That is what is Atman. When the prana becomes pure consciousness, that is when it becomes Atma again, regains the form of Atman. Baba, if the prana can be controlled, that means prana is something like the breath. The breath itself is prana. It's it's not control, breath. You are misunderstanding. It is not breath. It is not like a breath. It is the prana goes means it is the Atman's mind. The mind, when death happens to the body, prana goes means it is that mind which gives up the body and takes next incarnation. Um, it's a follow-up question, Baba. I read in an article that ordinarily prana flows through two channels, Iregale and Pingale. But with constant meditation and yogic practice, uh, these two channels can be restrained and the prana flows happens through the Sushumna Nadi. When this happens, one can attain the self. Is this process same like the Kundalini awakening or can you explain further about this process, Baba? Yes. Prana yes. flows through through the breath control, but the breath has to be going smoothly, respiring, inhaling and exhaling. But when you totally focus on that one, your mind becomes purified, then it lifts the Kundalini also, then it merges with the Atman Self. So Baba, what is the connection between the prana and the mind? 
controlling prana yeah. controlling the prana your mind becomes purified controlling the prana means you see the breath you cannot stop the breath otherwise oxygen supply will be stopped to the body many people misunderstand and confused controlling prana means you control the breath so that smoothly its rhythm keeps going on and your mind gets detached from that and becomes purified into a pure consciousness you try to understand these terminologies book terminologies can be very confusing for you you forget about this prana atman anything it is just a mind that you need to purify by practicing this meditation and when the mind becomes purified it merges with the atman that is what you need to understand i hope this is understandable for you baba there's another follow up question can i ask this if the if it, if it is not changing if it's unchanging then we call it atman the self if it is changing then it is the prana if it is changing it is the mind forget then, about the prana i told you you see that's what you don't listen to the guru then you will always be confused have faith in the guru i was saying that you are getting confused by reading these books forget about prana forget about ida forget about pingala pangala everything just know mind your mind is the troublesome which is changing in imaginations leave the rest to itself and you have to cleanse this mind by practicing meditation if the mind becomes cleansed then the mind merges with the self the self is the atman unchangeable self is unchangeable people talk of theory by reading scholars they try to give lectures and lectures and lectures but nobody has experienced what the truth is if you experience the truth you will be precise to the point so this is what is understandable in the present day terminologies you all have studied the college so you can understand mind you can understand cleansing of the mind means all thoughts imaginations in the mind has to go that is what will happen in the silence watching of the mind you just keep watching your prana will be controlled automatically without thinking about prana you just watch in between eyebrows i repeat again do not keep thinking about prana pingala mangala just concentrate in between eyebrows your mind will be purified and then the mind will be able to merge with the self thank you baba <laughs> thank you baba ji baba ji there's a question in the chat can i read yeah. the question yes yes baba ji the question is actually relating to the quote that baba ji sent out this morning today's quote everybody knows what the right thing to do is is this what people call as the sixth sense and why does our mind not let us listen to our inner voice it is some people might call it sixth sense but in a simple language to understand your mind in your antahkarana in your consciousness conscience is the word that is used you understand conscience <coughs> so that means your real mind what is in there you know what the right is but yet you might be committing mistakes and wrong doings because of some selfish interest and some other things influenced by some other things so that's what we have tried to tell everybody know this truth what it is yet they refuse to understand so if you meditate you will be able to execute this truth see a larger cause always that is the basic idea of today's quote thank you baba ji uh, baba ji there is another question uh, is more of a devotee's experience when meeting baba ji personally so the devotee said that uh, when she met baba ji there was this uncontrollable feeling and she started crying so she wanted to know uh, why does this happen Uh, is it a good thing or a bad thing that it happened as such and 
is it something that she needs to learn how to control so that it doesn't happen again? You see, one important thing you have to understand. When you met Babaji, when you started crying, was it giving you an unknown peace and happiness within you? Or was it giving you an annoyance and all such troublesome things? If it was peace and happiness within you, that you have found something precious, then that is a good thing, isn't it? Now when you became attached to a master, so it is previous connections also. And these things are beyond explanations. It is inexplicable such experiences. You had that experience because of previous connections. That is what it is. You just carry on. If it continues, then you will be able to sustain. Then that experience was true, not a momentary one. That is what is important to know. Thank you, Babaji. Okay. Fine. Thank wonderful. Very nice session. We discussed about some nice, lovely questions. And glad you asked those questions, giving me an opportunity to express my experience and what my guru taught me. And that's what is important. All of you, finally, today we were discussing the Advaita, Dvaitas, Gurus, all these things. Do not go into theories much about different, different books. That's when the confusion happens with the terminologies. It is something, again, I will tell, I have told hundred times this example. A father and a son were fighting. Father was telling, Ke, this is my wife. The son said, Ke, she cannot be a wife, she is mother. Because to the son, she was a mother. To the father, she was a husband, wife. Does this make any sense? The father was insisting, no, she is not a mother, she is a wife. Son insisted, no, she is a mother, she cannot be a wife. There was no meaning in it. To the son, she was a mother. To the husband, she was a wife. In the same way, different teachers would have used different terminologies. That's why in the present day, we use this terminology, mind, pure consciousness, conscience and the self. This is what you have to know because that is where the self consciousness is coming for you. As I have told another point amongst millions of thoughts that is in your mind, one is the consciousness of existence. Repeatedly I have been talking this in this since some years now. Consciousness of existence means you always have a feeling that you exist. When you meditate, if you just keep watching, all thoughts and visions will disappear eventually. Then this thought, consciousness of existence, which is not an imagined thought, it will always be there. So that is what is important. So stick to that. You concentrate on that. That will take you back to the real self. That's all what? No more theory is need to know. It can be very confusing. That's why Swamiji always insisted, just meditate and know yourself. After meditation, he said, he did not say, okay, read and know yourself. By reading, you will never know yourself. Definitely. You will be confused about yourself. You meditate, then you can know yourself. Remember this point. And